This is the setup I have right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Welcome to what's I play. Today I'm gonna show you how to build a new 4K editing and gaming PC. We have the Ryzen 3900X with the MSI B450 motherboard and 2X of the Samsung one terabyte A60 Evo hard drive. And for the graphic card, we have the XFX Thick Ultra 5700 XT. And for the RAM, we definitely got the 64 gigabyte of the Rip Gel from G Skill and also the HyperX Steel from Patriot. As for cooling, we got the Hydro series of the H880i version 2 from Corsair. It's going to be a good one. And for the case, we have the Intec 900 version 3. Yep, I'm gonna use my chef knife to do the unbox video. You can see it's very nice. Let's take a look at what's inside the Gaming Plus motherboard for the AM Force processor. Hey. <clears throat> So let's open up the motherboard first. You can see here, the reason why I chose the B450 is because it's relatively affordable. And it basically supports all the things I need. And plus I like the look. It's pretty, um, it's pretty high tech looking. It's black and it has red, just like my color thing. And let's put it here. Let's see what else it comes. You have the user manual, you have a sticker, and the IO bracket. That's about it. Let's get to that later today. <clears throat> and then we have the RAM here. And I, the reason why I chose this one is because it, it was on sale actually. So for, for the whole build, I spent about a little less than 1000 on the components besides graphic card. And I have the link down below and also if you want to know more about the computer components and also photography and video editing please feel free to subscribe to my channel and also i will give you more better deals in the future okay so in the g scale we also have a sticker here so let's just install it It's nice to feel that feel that clicking noise. And for the other two set of a uh, RAM, we used the uh, Viper for gaming on the Patriot. It's a 32 gigabyte also DDR4 3200 megahertz. We also come with sticker. Yeah. I also like the look of this one. It's kind of like a transformer design, if you know what I mean. Let's see. Packaging is a little bit tight. It's okay. All right, let's put it in. It's a little bit mismatched, but I guess it'll be okay. Right, so there we have it. We have a 64 gigabyte of RAM here. It's gonna be a killer for the video editing. It'll make a huge difference. Hmm. How about we open it? Let's install the Ryzen 3900X. It's cool. 
Very cool. Let's open this box. Also come with a sticker. It says rising and let's open the box and see what else is inside. Okay, it has a brochure here and also has a huge heat sink. I heard a lot of good things about this heat sink, so I'll just open it up so everybody can take a look at it. But I'm actually going to do a liquid cooling um, solution. So it has a huge heat sink, it has a bunch of heat pipe, it has a rainbow color LED going on it, but we are not going to use this. Okay. So as the heat sink, we are going to use the Corsair H80i version 2. This actually doesn't support the Ryzen 3. So I'm actually going to um, use the adapter. Let's see who that is. So if you want to use it with the Ryzen, you have to get a adapter with a school number of uh, it's called a CW-A960046. This really is a different bracket that works with the Ryzen 3900X or other AN4 sockets. Okay. Well, we can take a look at it. Open this up. I much prefer this shift knife over other small knives. Oh, okay, I guess I didn't open it correctly. Let me just open it up and rip it open. Nice. It has a 12, it has a 12 centimeter um, fan and also a um, reservoir for liquid cooling. And See how to open this. This is how you open it. All right. Now it's open. Well, oh, there's uh, two fans. There's two fans. There's the reservoir. It has another. Um, I think this is also the different brackets for different type of the processor, but we're not going to use that. We'll probably use this wire only. Okay, just opening up, and there's more of these uh, user guide okay, and warranty information. Put them aside. All right. So, what should we do now? Let's install the CPU first. There's only one way to do this. You can see here. It's actually quite obvious. There's only one orientation to put the CPU in. Let's focus the camera a little bit on that. Okay, then we're going to install the CPU. 
So on the CPU, there's actually a small dot here. Let's see if you can see better when you open it. It's actually a small triangular shape here that pointed to this part of the socket. So this is the only orientation that it will fit. So you see that? It's flush. Flush fit. So we're good to go. So we have the Ryzen here. Ryzen on the motherboard. Pretty cool, right? Well, the other two components that we haven't mentioned is the power supply and the hard drive. So just spend a little bit of time talking about that. I have a C Sonic. It's the SS650KM. It's a rated 80% um, efficiency, 80 plus gold here. And it is also a modular uh, format power supply, which means that you can use different type of cable only when you want to. So it save a lot of space. So I recommended this kind of modular uh, power supply. So it can save a lot of uh, space if you don't have to use so many components. And also for the hard drive, we, <coughs> we chose the VNet SSD A60QVO. This is from Samsung. And one of the best reasons to get this one is the price is just unbeatable. It's like a $99, I think, for one terabyte. In my, old, in my previous computer back eight years ago, I had to buy like a 106 gig of SSD almost $200. you believe that? It's crazy. So this process, this part of here is all built with metal. It's aluminum. It's very light. And you just feel very premium. It's pretty good. And we have two of them. So that's going to help us building a faster computer in the red. I usually back out in my other, other hard drive, so I'm actually going to do a RAID 0 on these babies. So I wonder how fast that would take. Apparently I might be able to turn on Windows, get into Windows within 5 seconds. Let's see about that. Alright, on to the next thing. Let's take a look at them in the close-up. I'll also be running some benchmark on the performance of the 5700 XT versus um, the GTX 970 that I had before. So stay tuned to watch more for that. It's funny how uh, most of the box are already open, so I can't really use my knife even though I want to. But for the graphic card, we actually have a seal here. So I'm gonna open it up here. This is the XFX Thick Ultra 5700 XT. This is an interesting graphic card. For all of the benchmark I saw from gaming, this card is almost as good as this 2070, I mean RTX 2070 Super, which is why I bought it because it only costs like 150 cheaper compared to the 2070 Super. But it looks like for Adobe Premiere, the performance might be a little bit slower than the RTX 2060. But I will check it out and let you guys know. First, let's take a look at it. 
right? And it's a fancy box, but then it looks kind of dull inside. But it does say XFX on this way. Let's open it up and see what's going on. Wow. So it seems like after you open the box, there's another box. And you open this box, there's another box inside. It's just a never ending process. You see this box? There's the installation guy, there's the warranty, and there's the car. Wow, what can I say? When this car says thick, it's not joking, it's actually really thick. Wow, I don't think I have a car this thick before. I'm not sure if the case can even handle it. Let's open and take a look. Holy cow, this is like the craziest car ever. It's so thick and long. <laughs> wow, that's a master, the monster of a car. And I've been waiting so long yeah. to have you. By my side Then I felt it all, weeping alone Your words remain carved in my bones Thought I knew how this shit would go So I don't know how the fuck I'ma let go Rain and shine, I'ma get money If you wake up, that's a good morning, yeah Faces all around me, they yawning And I'ma smile back if we honest, but I ain't doing nothing, I don't need just a G Chasing money till he go and rest in peace Know that it ain't always so what it too. seems When my brother's blowing trees They just really blowing steam I keep on no, I actually doesn't see Driving perfect circles Wondering if it's worth wow. it Always getting hurt okay. and I keep on Uh oh, we got a problem We have to get a different case. We need probably two more centimeter here to make sure it can fit. That is a monster of a card. I need to check if I have another case at my work. And I oh, this is my old case. whole thing out. This is a GTX 970 from back then. I mean, it should work, right? Well, even this doesn't work. Wow. What a shame. That's crazy. That is really crazy. So now we're going to the old computer. Take out all the old components, swap it out, and put the new one. Since it's so dusty and dirty, you should better put some mask and also get some wet wipe. We're just cleaning the inside of the case with a power now. Oh, 
Oh, there's some tape here too. Solid cleaning. Look at all this dust. It's crazy. I'm wearing a mask now too. Look at all this dust. Don't smell. Poison gas. I wonder if it's attached on the bottom. This one now. We can install the graphic card. Just as I thought I was finished with the computer build, I turned on the computer and I saw there's uh, no post and at the same time there's a light blinking next to the error code next to CPU. So I was wondering if there's anything wrong with the BIOS setting or if there's any other thing that I haven't checked. So if you, if you come take a look at the MSI D450 Gaming Plus Max motherboard, Take a look at the key features. They actually support EM4 and also supports third generation Ryzen. But I don't know why when I bought it from BH Photo, it actually didn't uh, support Ryzen 3900X first and there was no review. So good thing I was able to follow the guide, which I'll put the link down below on this other tech enthusiast who help people to show them how to update the BIOS through a USB port. I was able to um, update the BIOS, so I took out the CPU Ryan, and then I also <laughs> followed this um, video and made a USB drive to help with the, saving the US BIOS. And we're gonna follow the video and use this button there to trigger the BIOS update. Right now we're <coughs> going to put the USB drive right next to the the flash button, the BIOS update button, and then we're going to click the BIOS update button. Please feel free to comment or ask me any questions. I finally got the computer to work and I'll show you how it performs in the next clip.